Hey everyone, so I'm Hannah and this is Myron and welcome to our channel. Up until now we've mainly done kind of like travel vlog style videos but we want to start doing some more helpful videos about what van life is like and how we built our van and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, if you're not familiar with our channel, we're New Zealanders uh, but we're traveling in a van in Europe and the UK and we've been on the road for about five months five now. Months, yeah. yeah. Um, so we're coming to the end of a very hot and very long summer yeah. in Europe. It's actually autumn now technically, but it does not feel like it's it. Like we're in 32 degrees or something. Yeah, in right now it's like 32 degrees. We are in Greece, so it's a hotter country, but we have spent most of the summer in hot countries. Yeah. Um, so we thought we'd do a video on staying cool in a van during summer with no AC and when I say no AC we don't have AC in our living space because you know it takes a lot of power to run but our van itself doesn't even have AC in the cab it just we, we just didn't get that it's van a bit of an oversight we we viewed one that had it but it wasn't we didn't right. think about it and yeah we just, and it wasn't the right van yeah. so yeah so we're gonna get started with the things we do to stay cool so the first thing is having a roof fan um, so a 12 volt like RV style yeah. fan and get one that has intake and exhaust so that means it can pull air in and suck air out um, we find we keep the coolest when we have it on intake when we're bringing air in but it can work well on exhaust if you have a door or a window or something open and we leave that on pretty much all the time only if you have all the doors open we sometimes turn it off yeah. but we leave it on all throughout the night on about halfway kind of thing it does get a bit noisy but but you get, you used, get to used to it, it. it's and like a white noise kind of thing it's better to be cool and have a kind of slight white noise yeah. than to be boiling hot yeah. um also putting it on exhaust when you cook like even if you're just like i'm just cooking a really quick meal it's only going to take 10 minutes still put it on exhaust because cooking creates some heat and you just want to get rid of as much heat as possible as you can in yeah, summertime. and a bit of the humidity and water yeah. coming off the uh, cooking as especially well, if you're boiling like out. pasta or rice yeah, or something like yeah. that um, so ours is installed over our kitchen ideally you'd have two fans one of your kitchen one of your bed, bed area and having one on exhaust and one on intake just creates like a really nice flow unfortunately we didn't have room for that no. because we have so much solar because we rely solely on electricity we don't have any gas um so yeah ideally we would have put in two fans but we just didn't have the room and in hindsight i wish we'd put the fan over our bed yeah because it having over hot at night, yeah, it, yeah and it does it works well but if we'd had it over our bed and the air was coming directly onto us i think it would be a lot nicer than where it is yeah but it, it's still yeah. being bearable yeah it's it's we survived yeah. yeah so we also have a small usb fan that we plug into the wall it's nice and portable so you can point it at your face anywhere to cool down um it was just a cheap fan five pounds from dunelms and it's worked perfectly yeah don't underestimate a little fan because mm. when it's hot and you don't have ac all you can really do because you can't actually get the air cooler because you don't have ac so all you can really do is just create as much air movement as possible yeah. so the more fans you have the more air you can create we only have one in hindsight we should have got two i did say that to myron at the time yeah. he's like no it's not gonna be too bad we'll just get one mm. And so now I like claim that it's my fan and I'm yeah. not very good at sharing it. <laughs> it especially helps at night when you have to shut up because you don't want yeah. bugs coming into the van, then it really helps. Yeah, and it's like, because you can move it, it's like direct air right at you. Yeah. So the next thing is covering your windows. Our van is white and it's well insulated, so it takes a while for the heat to get through the metal. But we do have windows. Uh, we installed a few windows in the back and then there's the windows in the front and because our windows in the back are tinted and they're really really dark tint it doesn't look like it on camera it looks like you can see yeah. right out which you can yes. but outside you cannot see in at all um so because they're black they attract a lot of heat yeah, hot like, enough that you can't touch it or anything yeah it's, it's yeah. so hot um so covering them really really makes a difference we use like aluminium foil like a reflectix type of thing to cover them and yeah it, it makes a huge difference yeah whenever you take it off you can feel a warm pocket of air between the yeah. reflectix and the glass and the shiny aluminium kind of reflects some of the sunlight back out 
The same thing applies to your windscreen, your windows in the cab area as well. Use a reflector, whether you buy one or just use like leftover reflectors like mm. we did and just cut it to shape. Um, a lot of sun, we find a lot of sun comes in the cab, especially in a sprinter van. The windscreen is huge, so a lot of sun comes in that way. And also we'd recommend having a curtain between the cab area and the living space because shutting that, when that sun's coming in the cab, shutting that just stops so much heat coming in there. And if you keep the windows down slightly, in the front any heat that is coming in is just going to leave through those windows before it comes into the back yeah especially if you park the van into the sun yeah the sun just beats in through those uh wrap around windows it's, yeah so if you haven't started your build yet and you're putting windows in would really recommend putting one window in that can open yeah. that's kind of one of the things we regret not doing we talked about it at the time but we didn't think we'd need it we're like we've got a fan we'll be fine but especially if you've only got one fan i think if you've got two fans you're okay not having windows that open but if you only have one fan i'd really recommend putting in a window that can open it just helps you create some more air movement especially at yeah. night time you have to shut the doors and yeah. yeah the fan does have a limitation with just one because it's blowing air in but there's only small gaps around the doors and stuff so it can only can like out. bring so in so only much so air. much it can bring in so yeah so obviously using window covers blocks your view and when you've got a beautiful view like this and you're traveling to see beautiful views like this you don't really want to block it so that brings us on to our next point and that is opening the doors this helps a lot to create a breeze through the van, especially if you can open, say, one of the back doors and then put a window down in the front or open the sliding door. So then it just creates a cross breeze all throughout the van. Yeah, so really, like we said, all you can really do is create a breeze. So opening doors and having a fan on at the same time and having doors at opposite ends of the van, like more than one door yeah. open, is going to create your breeze. So the next thing is seek out the cold now a lot of people go to different regions or different states or even different countries and you if you're in Europe to seek out the cold we have not done that no. we have spent this summer in very hot places like Italy Croatia Greece like we have most of the time been in temperatures 30 degrees Celsius above yeah. like I think today it's like 32 33 we've had days that have been like 37 38 mm. it's been hot but, so while we haven't avoided like whole countries that are hot, we've gone to places in those countries that are cool. So sometimes we'll go to the mountains to escape the heat for a little bit. But most of the time what we do is try to get to a lake or a beach. Yeah. And that helps with the heat kind of twofold. One is by the water there's usually a breeze. We have a much stronger breeze at the beach than if we were inland. Plus you have the sea or a lake and you can swim and that cools you down. Like don't underestimate how much swimming cools you down and like just stay in the water as much as you can i mean it's lovely we're we're doing this to like experience fun things and swim in yeah. all these different seas and so it's just fun anyway we'd be swimming whether it was boiling hot or not we're probably going to swim still in winter <laughs> but like it, it just cools you down so much and i don't know our kind of thing is we we swim and then we don't like dry ourselves off we just kind of sit there with like the water still on us i try and wet my hair even though like this way my hair is looking a bit crazy today i like got it in the sea yesterday and then it's just kind of gone a bit crazy but it just keeps you cool for so much longer mm. so just yeah, yeah get to breezy places so go to the cooler places as much as you can even if you can't go to a different state or a different country just go to a an area or a beach or a water or something that is just a bit cooler than where you are. Yeah, like in Croatia we were at the beach and then it was only a half an hour drive into the mountains and then yeah. it was 15 degrees cooler, it was crazy. Yeah, so even though Croatia like on the whole was like 35 degrees, when it was 35 degrees we were at the beach and then when we got onto the mountains the temperature dropped by 10 or 15 degrees. Mm. So yeah, just go where you can, that's a bit cooler. And water, we've already covered swimming in it, now the next one is just to keep drinking it and stay hydrated. One thing we also do is put a bottle of water in the fridge, just a small 500ml bottle, and then you can always pull that out, have a nice cool drink. Yeah, cold, like drinking water is so important, stay, staying hydrated is so important, especially when it's hot out. Um, but yeah, cold water just goes a long way, and even better if you've got a freezer, have ice cubes. Or ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> ice cream and ice box help too. So the next tip is the shade, find shade, park in the shade if you can. The thing is we don't actually follow this tip ourselves. 
because we rely so much on electricity in our van and we need as much solar as possible, we don't really tend to park in the shade. No, our whole roof is just is solar, solar panels. <laughs> so we try and get as much solar as we can. But if you can park in the shade or just go somewhere that's in the shade, park next to a tree and then take some chairs outside and sit under the tree. Mm. So with, with you, if you can't park in the van, go like park, sorry if you can't park the van in the shade at least take yourselves to the shade yeah i do think also that the solar panels help when we're in the sun because the solar panels do have a bit of an air gap to the top of the van so i think the solar panels collect the sunlight and then the bottom of the van the top of the roof of the van actually stays in the shade all the mm. time so i think that helps a bit too so the next thing is the color of your van you may be looking at mileage, yeah, a lot of different factors when purchasing the van, but colour does actually make a huge difference in the summer. The lighter colours, like ours is a white, and it reflects a lot of sunlight. Compared to the black of the windows will be untouchable, but the white of the van is still nice and cool. So that's another big tip. Yeah, so if you're going to spend a lot of time in hot places, mm -hmm. I would yeah. consider the colour of your van as an important factor. Um, it just kind of worked out that we got a white van, but we kind of were looking for one anyway. Yeah. So the next thing is having aircon in the cab of your van. So like we said, we don't even have that. We literally have no aircon whatsoever. Um, in hindsight, it should have been something we paid more attention to. But in saying that, we were on a really strict budget and we were buying a used van and mileage and age of the van were just more important to us and the condition of the engine and the condition of the panelling, making sure there was no rust, like those mm -hmm. things were really, really important to us. But if you are going to spend a lot of time in hot places, if you're going to chase the summer all the time, yeah, um, yeah I would say having aircon in the cab is really important yeah yeah we roll down the windows but it'd still be super nice to have yeah air conditioning in so it. even if you can't have a full-on aircon unit in your living space if you can have aircon in the cab yeah it's better like we can turn our air onto cold like we have a heater and you can in the front in the cab like what what cars come with you can turn it on to cold but it's not actually ac it's just pulling in air from mm. outside yeah so number one tip is to use as many of these methods as possible and use them as early in the day as possible. Keep the van cool. It's much harder to cool the van down than it is to keep the van cool. So as soon as you wake up, keep those curtain covers on. Yeah. If it's really hot, if the sun's coming in, open the doors, get a breeze, get your roof fan on, get your little fan on, drink your water, stay hydrated. It's much harder once the van starts to kind of, cre if it's 35 degrees outside and the van, inside the van starts to creep up that, to that temperature, your insulation kind of works against you and traps that heat in. Yeah. So keeping the van cool and keeping like overnight, if it's got down to 19, 20 degrees and the van is cooled down, get those doors open to keep the breeze moving so you can keep that cooler temperature and yeah so just as early in the day as possible just keep the van cool and if you're going out for the day which you know we're often not in the van for a whole day we'd kind of get to the spot we're going to go explore and we'd leave all the window coverings up put the screen up in the front shut the cab curtain just so the van stays as cool as possible and yeah get drinking water as soon as possible go for a swim early in the morning yeah. So in all honesty, living in 35 degree heat in a van without AC is not fun. No. It's hard, it's hot, you can get very irritable and grumpy at your partner or other people around you or even just yourself. It is hard to cool down, but it's so worth it to have yeah. like an, a glorious European summer. Like mm -hmm. we have had the best summer of our lives, yeah. like it's been amazing. But it's not fun, it's hard, it's not going to be like, like none of these solutions are gonna be like sitting at home and under an aircon unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is good to have say one week of in the summer at the beach, nice and hot, and then maybe a few days up in the mountains again just yeah. to cool down, refresh, and then come back to the beach. And yeah, hot. so you just need to put as many of these methods to practice as possible and just kind of come to terms with the fact that it's not gonna be always pleasant, no. but if you want that kind of like amazing summer it's just the trade-off mm. um if you don't really care about summer just go north go somewhere cool yeah <laughs> but yeah so while it's not always pleasant it, it has been bearable i'm not a big summer person i'm an autumn winter person and i've coped so i think you can um yeah mm. 
yeah thank you guys so much for watching we really appreciate it um please let us know if this was helpful ask us any questions what else do you want us to talk about we want to do videos about kind of all the decisions we made in building the van how we're finding van life yeah. you know we want to wear our solar our electricity our plumbing like everything mm -hmm. we've put into this van we built it completely by ourselves researched lots of options everything yeah. we've picked has worked perfectly and i don't think we could have yes yeah, there's a couple yeah. of things that change yeah probably but again we did we did kind of what we could with the budget and stuff we had um but yeah please let us know what you want to hear from us and you know what we can talk about and anything we can help you especially if you're just starting your van build yeah We'd, we did so many so many hours and hours of research we'd love to be able to put that information out there so you don't have to do as much research yeah, yeah. like learn from our mistakes and what we did so if you've got any questions or any ideas for videos or you know what you want to know please let us know and yeah thank you so much for watching please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and yeah we'll see you in the next video bye, bye. it's hot it is it's hot i'm gonna get my hair tied up <laughs>